Well, hello again from Kingston. I'm on the west side today and we're going to start our coverage with a detailed examination of what's been going on on top of the concrete girders. People who do an amazing job but don't get seen too often. So let's go have a look. Thanks for watching. Take care. On Tuesday this week, with Paul Wash, who takes the amazing still photographs of this project, I was able to visit the West End. For a project that is well known for concrete and steel, it amazed both of us just how much wood goes into it. This means that the carpenters are amongst the most important members of the team. They're in the vanguard of most work, building safety structures, forms and frameworks that support the whole effort. The other thing that really strikes you as a visitor is just how complex and complicated the whole business of placing rebar to support the concrete that will eventually be poured actually is. There's a variety of sizes and shapes from 10 millimeter to 25 galvanized and non-galvanized and every single piece has to be correctly placed for efficiency. The work is performed by an amazing group of men and women who undertake the placement of each piece, twisting them together with wire, in a very clearly defined plan. The work demands concentration and precision and it can be back-breaking and difficult to perform in all weathers. Another thing we learned on Tuesday is that the concrete slabs that sit atop the girders are of different sizes and weights and each is individually numbered and intended to go in a particular position. I'll continue to keep an eye on all the work that takes place atop the girders. Leaving the site we noticed that the west abutment is now being uh, prepared with gravel infill. There was an opportunity too to look at some of the expansion units that will close gaps on the bridge. And the scuppers which will collect rainwater and other runoff from the bridge. At the other end of the concrete section of the bridge, on a very wet Thursday, there was a great deal of work going on to assemble the concrete forms which had been used for Pier 16. On Friday, a truck and trailer had arrived for them to be loaded and taken from the site. It took a fair bit of juggling and manipulation to ensure that the load was uh, prepared in the right order, but uh, by lunchtime the trailer had departed the site and the forms were finished with. It only remains for one pier, Pier 21, to be completed and we'll look at that in a moment. We can't leave the concrete section of the bridge without remarking that another three concrete girders arrived from DCAS this week. On a wet Thursday morning, in what was, for the crane operators at least, a bit of a family affair, with Mikey operating one and his uncle Jamie the other, the three girders were placed by 9.30. That leaves just 12 more concrete girders to go, west of the navigation channel. Don't forget, there will be 10 on the east side. I mentioned that we'd have a look at Pier 21, which is the one that leads off the steel structure to the east ramp. And here it is, gradually filling up with rebar, ready to be poured with cement. Just to its right is the east abutment, where the next vertical stage is forming quickly. Rebar is being placed and uh, work is well advanced. This is going to be a strong and substantial structure. While we're over this way, let's have a look at the steel structure. The iron workers this week removed many of the temporary posts and cross beams which had supported the bridge during its assembly. There was some steel cutting involved 
and then careful manipulation of the beams to rise through the existing steel structure was required, with the removal of one or two braces that had later to be replaced. In marked contrast to this heavyweight task, two iron workers were busy for much of the week placing what appeared to be small studs on top of the girders. This work involved precise measurement, preparation of an area, its heating, and then the use of an induction gun to weld the studs. And if anyone can tell us why, we'd be really interested to know. Now we need to look at what's been happening at the intersection of Gore Road and Highway 15. During the week, the old light poles were removed, the new temporary traffic lights were activated, and after removing the old road markings, new markings were laid down. Late in the week, the pace of activity was picking up, and it's clear that the roadway is going to be formed in pretty short order. But the important news is that every effort is being made to maintain access to the public library. This will clearly be a challenge, and everybody's going to have to exercise a little bit of patience. As a contribution to reducing stress, let's have a look at some of the wildlife encountered this week. Well, that rounds off another week. I think you'll agree it's been pretty interesting. And don't forget, if you want to be sure of seeing these, consider subscribing. Much appreciated. Give me a like if you agree. If not, click twice. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.